Right, if the powers that be work correctly, then my voice will be transferred onto the internet. Welcome everyone to Me Machine Talks. We are here. We are here today for the wonderful event that is Game Blast. Now, just before we get started, there is some housekeeping that we need to do. There are three things I want you to focus on. A, the commands at the top left of your screen. Type any one of those into chat and you will be presented with some information, including information about this wonderful person who I will introduce shortly and also some places of where you can donate to. Um, there's also a ability to send in some questions live. Um, so if you put exclamation mark pod question, you'll be presented with a link that you can send questions about what we're about to talk about, which is special effect. And the other thing to keep an eye on is the big red bar at the top right which is basically our donation goal. And as you can see, we are incredibly close to hitting £500, which is incredible. So anyway, enough about me. Yes, that way. There we go. Uh, enough, about, <laughs> enough about me. Good job, Becky. You, you see, you're better, than, you're better than me at this. So it's, uh, it's fine. Um, so yes, welcome. And my guest today is none other than Becky, who is on this side. I get this wrong every time. Is on this side of this side of the screen. There we go, this side of the screen. Um, so, nice. Be Becky, I what I normally do with my guests is I normally hand over a virtual mic. So I'm going to hand this over like this. Oh, so, God. Okay, hang on. Hang Here on. we go. Here we go. I'm going to... No, the other this way. way? Other no, way. this way. There we go. Right, I'm going to drop that there. And <laughs> I'm going to say, can you tell me who you are and what you do? A banana, banana, good job. Good job, sir. That's what we do. Um, I like that magic trick. It was a good job. Um, <laughs> uh, can you introduce yourself in a minute or less and tell us all about the wonderful things that you do and who you are? I can give it a try. Uh, so, try. hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Becky. I'm from Special Effect. Uh, Special Effect is the gamers' charity. We make and modify video game controllers and setups for people with physical disabilities so that they can enjoy this crazy world of video games and Twitch and Mixer and all the different uh platforms that there are available several of um is that a minute or less uh, what that, was the question that, that, who am i <laughs> that that will do i think you pretty much covered that off so you did a, you did a good you did a good job you did a good job um oh. but yeah no it's great to have you so thank you very much for giving us your time because i'm sure that you and the rest of your team are incredibly busy at this time of year uh, especially <laughs> with the fact that you've decided to give us um free reign of donating or getting us to raise money for your charity so i'm sure you're incredibly busy retweeting messaging and shouting at a lot of people probably going yes. give us more money no <laughs> we're not that aggressive we're not that aggressive um, um but since we're talking about giving money just to give you guys uh, some idea about um the amount of money that we can raise i mean we we're what just shy of 500 pounds for an example 200 pounds could buy a single hand controller to a enable a disabled gamer um to play with just one hand so you know that's an a staggering amount of money but literally changes someone's life to actually enable them to actually play a game but anything from as small as five pounds can actually just give us you know the correct cabling or you know to make to make flexible fixings for to go on control pads to enable, enable people to actually you know play things um depending on their uh disability to actually enable them to actually play games so you know the, the work that you guys do is outstanding um so i guess to kick this off where where did you kind of get introduced to, to special effects and what was kind of your path to, to get on board with the actual charity oh mine mine personally mm. um so i i actually started out as a volunteer um no back backtrack a bit i started out as a fundraiser oh, there we go. <laughs> um about six years ago um my husband and i were <laughs> running a nintendo fan club because we're okay. very cool um little little guy in the background here Absolutely. um yeah, we, we were running a Nintendo fan club uh, in our local area. Uh, the DS had just recently come out, so it was right. uh, the street pass function. Um, and we were like, oh, no, we haven't got any friends. We, we'll have to, like, get get people together. <laughs> we've, we've also um, just had a, a donation, by the way, of oh, £20. Pounds. So thank you very much, Uber Noodles, for that. That was incredible. Thank you very much for that. In fact, in fact, let me just cut to some it because you, sir, need an applause. <laughs> There we go. Sorry, sorry to catch you off flow, but that was that was important because I think that's just taken us over the limit. But anyway, carry on. That's incredible. Yeah, just just to just to backtrack a bit to that as well. You've you've started. Wait, hang on. Who am I? Where am I? You've started your stream with an almost full donation goal bar. Indeed. That's incredible. <laughs> Indeed. Like, the, and the, the, honestly, the, this is exactly the, why we leave Game Blast to to the experts, to you guys. <laughs> honestly, like the the generosity this year has been outstanding. I can't yeah. thank people enough. This year has just been staggering in terms of the support. So, um, as I said, every pound and penny really does make a difference, and that amount that we've raised up there is incredible. So, thank you all very much. Anyway, back to you. <laughs> 
Nintendo fan club so, DS had just come out. Am I? Yes. <laughs> um, yeah. So we we just got together, and I wanted to I wanted to do a fundraiser. I thought, you know what? We've got a group of people. We're we're meeting like weekly, biweekly. Let's let's do a charity fundraiser. We could do a bit of good. So I literally Googled video game charity, <laughs> and special effect popped up. And I I live in Oxfordshire. Um, they are based in Oxfordshire. Um, and it kind of went from there and, and from there i started volunteering um and i just I, I loved coming to all the different events around the uk and and volunteering on the stand and like telling more people about the charity and yeah it just kind of went from there i see i see a lot of um people kind of find out about the charity and do exactly the same thing i did which is just realize like what special effect are doing within the gaming industry and within the gaming community and go oh my god this is this is great like i i can help with this and there are so many different ways that people can help with that um from like fundraising to volunteering to working here <laughs> um yeah it yeah so that that's how i found out about special effect and um then a position came up within the admin team uh for events helping out with events and I went for it and here I am there we go <laughs> what, what a lovely story that is and I think that's that's really nice to hear that you kind of were going out looking for it and you found it and then obviously you're actually now working in it and I think that's that's really fantastic mm. and you know as I said the work that you guys do is just outstanding um but that doesn't mean that we should stop that doesn't mean we should stop fundraising because there's always 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 something that we can help with so um mm. which is why we're doing things like we are today um so it's interesting you mentioned about the games industry and one question I wanted to ask and I don't know if it's slightly controversial may or may not be but do you feel that the games industry are now getting more on board with supporting disabled gamers and that they're becoming more willing to actually work with people like special effect uh yeah totally like um the the xbox adaptive controller is a fantastic example of of that um xbox worked with special effect and several other charities to put this adaptive controller together um, aptly named the Xbox Adaptive Controller, um, <laughs> <laughs> and just the their willingness to kind of uh, it it started out as as very much a passion project within Microsoft, as far as I understand it, and it it became this thing that snowballed because people within Microsoft got wind of it and went, "Hang on, this this is great. I want to I want to help with that." And uh, I remember the morning that it like released to the public we were kind of in a in a like staff briefing to be like right social media is pro probably going to go a bit crazy so here's here's like the um the details of it and and you know what's what information is going to be publicly available this morning and our ceo founder of the charity dr mick um said what did he say it was something along the lines of like at the end of the day we just want as many people playing as possible um, and then later in the day, Phil Spencer of, of um, Xbox fame tweeted something almost exactly the same that was like, look, we'll, we'll share this, this information with any other companies that, that want to get in on it. We just want as many people playing as possible. And that like, that really hit home for me. Mm. It, it, you know, games, games industry and, and the developers and companies that, that support special effect at the moment, they really like, they genuinely care about getting this service to as many people as as possible and it really shows within their their support um and that's really special right and something else that's special is we've just had another 20 pounds donated what? so so that's thank amazing. you very much and i think that deserves another round of applause for that. <laughs> so thank you very much um that is awesome we are already killing it today in terms of defeating yeah. the goal so uh, i think we have all leveled up the charity to quote a game phrase there <laughs> bad pun sorry um but no uh, i mean it's again it, it's fantastic to see that and i think there's a i think there's an example actually running on that video there of the the, the chap actually playing um, racing games using the a similar piece of technology if not i don't know if it is the microsoft one i don't think it is but it works on the same basis but i, yeah. I think what i would love to see and i think we're we're actually starting to see it a little bit because i mean I, I play a lot of vr myself and there's a lot of VR games that are actually made for people with physical disabilities, which sounds 
weird to say, but it is true. Um, I mean, Beat Saber, which I was playing yesterday, actually has loads of different um, switches and stuff that you can actually turn off. There's a seated mode, there's a one-handed mm. mode, there's so many different things you can pl- do to the game to, to modify it. And it's really nice to see... Um, to see these games and the the industry actually take this on board to try and get as many people into the game as possible. Um, one of my friends, um, Dominoid, who was streaming yesterday again for special effect, friend of the channel, um, was actually streaming Fortnite yesterday, and he's actually um, deaf in one ear. And he actually mm-hmm. showed that in Fortnite you can actually change one of the settings so that, for instance, he hasn't got directional hearing. But there was actually a reticle that appears actually in the middle of the screen to actually show where sound is coming from. And I thought, this is yeah. this is fantastic. Like, I would love to see more games get involved into that. Um, you know, whether there almost becomes a... Um, I don't know, a, a consistent way of doing it across first-person shooters or a consistent way of doing it across, you know, um, you know, different types of variety of games. So um, I can see someone mentioned Farming Simulator. Damn you. You know I'm playing that <laughs> later. I don't think we need that for Farming Simulator. Um, but, you know, again, to a more serious point, I think it would be great to see the industry come up with its own standard um, that can be rolled out across everyone, regardless if they're an indie developer or a huge one as well. Yeah, there are, there are definitely some, like... Uh leaders of i'm trying to avoid the term thought leaders because that, <laughs> that's pretty really businessy yeah um but there are definitely some some leaders um with that like the the new gears of war game had some amazing um accessibility features in it um we we actually had harry from the team kind of take us through all the different like settings of it and like what each each different thing might be used for and and it it it's mind blowing the 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 work that special effect does um part of that as well as working with gamers is also working with um game developers game companies uh to kind of advise and um give give pointers on what they can do during the developmental stage as well um developmental is that a word it is now hmm. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um, yeah so during during the development stage of of games is is obviously the better time to build stuff in um and yeah we we can help with with that kind of side of things as well so any devs out there do get in touch we're we're very happy to help Um, there's also a game access blog sorry i'm i'm interrupting no no, go ahead go right ahead (laughs) this is all about the charity so i want it to be about it (laughs) the um the the tech team have brought out a um a game access blog as well so they go through different games, different like controller systems and, and put all that information out there. So it's very much like open source. Um, again, on that kind of Phil Spencer's um, philosophy of we'll share it with with anyone who needs to hear it. We just want as many people to be able to game as possible. Where, where can people find that information just out of interest? That is a great question. Uh, you can go to the website, which is www.specialeffect.org.uk. Um, and there's a little drop down menu with a game access blog on there as well um there's also a like wish list of uh features that game devs can can implement um so yeah if any like indie devs out there are are looking for just pointers when they get started that that sort of ideal wish list of what could be involved is is really important uh so bear with me one moment uh ben behaving badly if you click on that link and just drop that question in there and i will uh, look at that later um because otherwise i will probably miss it but i will re- try and remember that and uh, and keep that in mind but yeah if you just fill out that um doc that sheet that you get presented with from that link and then i will remember that um but no, I think you're absolutely right. I think you guys are doing the right thing of um, trying to get as many developers on board and trying to set that benchmark of um, what what needs to happen into the industry to, to help things forward. And I think you guys are probably, I mean, as far as I'm aware, probably the, the leaders in what you do, purely on the basis of the... Um, you know, when I first found out about special effects, um, I, I was astounded by the incredible work that you guys do but it wasn't just that it was the technical aspect as well and one thing i wanted to mention was i saw you on sega's stream yesterday yeah Sh- streaming streaming live <laughs> via a robot now if you haven't seen it please go and check out the sega stream because i had to double take when they said oh here's becky and i'm going um no uh, oh the robot so tell me a little bit about the <laughs> robot and and what what that's actually being used for in terms of the tech for people yeah sure so 
probably one of like one of my favorite interviews I did have done to date for for special effect uh, was via one of our AV1 uh, Bubble Busters robots. Um, so the robots are uh, little sort of desktop um, machines that are helping kids um, with cancer uh, to attend school. Uh, so oh, we're, wow. we're actually uh, pairing up uh, these little robots with kids who are going through um, leukemia treatment, which is keeping them away from from being able to go to school because um, they have like immune uh, deficiencies that mean that they need to you know stay in isolation. Um, but we've we've been providing uh, kids with this robot, which we then like put into the school um, and it attends school for them basically. So they have a an iPad um, and they can see everything that's going on in the classroom. The classroom can't see the child um, just just because a lot of the time, like kids who are going through that kind of treatment, they maybe don't want to be seen or they, um, yeah. Um, and yeah, it's just helping helping kids to be able to attend school and keep up with education, which is obviously super important. But one one of the really important aspects of that is that they tackle the isolation that comes behind that kind of treatment. Sure. Um, is I mean, for for a very young kid, they can sometimes feel like their their classmates have like forgotten about them, um, and just being able to like be there and. And, and be part of conversations and and you know play with with their friends um is is really important um, no no i think i think that's brilliant and you know i was <laughs> i was moderately surprised by um by what i saw um I, I I didn't think it was actually being used for that at all. But now you've said that, I mean that that really opens up a whole host of different opportunities. Whether it be um, I don't know, I'm trying trying to think of examples off the top of my head. You know, like you said, so, someone who's incapacitated who can't go somewhere but can still have that one to as close to a one to one relationship as possible. So, what what was your experience of being? somewhere but not being there but being there and you can you can move the head right which which I yeah thought, so it's really surreal so to, to see <laughs> the robot itself is um on like a little platform that can swivel but it can't go forwards and, and backwards so there's okay. no like danger of falling off the table or anything sure. like that when it's in the classroom environment um and so i could i could do a full one no full 360 right okay <laughs> um and completely look around my environment i could look up i could look down um i was actually before the stream started i was just watching what they were doing on the on the screen um like i was in the room and it was it was strangely like i've i've sat and had a chat to to one of the kids that's been that's been using the robot he he kind of came for a tour of the office almost and you forget when you're talking to the robot, you forget quite quickly <laughs> that you're talking to a robot. You're just talking to a kid who's like really interested in Captain Marvel. And that's really awesome. And you're just having a chat about comic books with this kid. Um, and then like being on the opposite side of that, you forget quite quickly that you're behind a screen and behind a robot. Um, Cause people are talking to you. Like that's really cool. it's quite different from being on, on Skype in a way as well. Cause at the moment, like, I'm trying to look into the camera, but I'm also looking a bit down here at you. And I'm looking <laughs> at you to, to see you like what chat are doing. <laughs> um, but like just just having the eyes to look through as part of the robot makes you feel so much more like you're there. Sure. Um, and I'm really glad I did it actually, because because knowing now like what the what the kids are experiencing as part of using the robot is like has just made it feel really different to me. Like they're experiencing the classroom like you know they can look around they're, they're not like stuck in in one camera position if yeah, that makes sense sure. which is not just out of their control as well like if i wanted to look around your room now i could not 
please don't. No, <laughs> it's a mess. It's a mess. You don't want to do that. Crash, Crash are you okay? Yeah. Just okay. blink twice if you need help. Yeah, Cra okay. Cra Crash has seen some things. I think it was the uh, me, me dressed up as a pharaoh on Beat Saber has uh, has left him <laughs> left him with a bit of trauma. But it's fine. It's fine. He's fine. He's he's surrounded by many friends, so it's totally fine. Um, <laughs> but no, I mean that that is a perfect example of um, technology being used for the greater good. And I, I just out of interest, how much would, does one of those robots cost? So about four grand. Okay. Um, and that that is like they are they look adorable and they're they're small little robots and they've got a really well designed app with them, but they are very advanced in the fact that they have to be very safe because they're designed to go into schools and to be used by children. Um, so there's a lot of like dev work that goes into that kind of thing, um, and yeah that. They're, they are expensive, but the the work that like streamers like you are doing for for Game Blast is is genuinely keeping that going. Sure. Um, no, I think yeah. the uh, I think <laughs> someone's just said this four grand the new goal. Well, if we get there, then we know what's going <laughs> that money's going to be used for. But um, you know, as you said, I, I guess it's one of those things where you know it looks very cute, but the technology is very powerful. But to be honest, you can't put a price on enabling someone to to learn again, you know, and, and things yeah. like that. So you know, it, it it may sound like a lot of money up front, but in terms of what the person who's using it getting back, I mean, you, you can't put a price on that. And as I said. I would suggest everyone go and have a look at that robot. It was on the Sega's live stream that they did, and it was just stunning to see this thing in, in action. And, you know, the, the audio quality was great. I mean, I'm assuming the video quality of what you see back was fantastic as well. So um, I can definitely see how something like that can be used in the future. But it does bring me on to another question, which is, what's the coolest piece of tech that you have seen someone use for gaming, besides that robot? Besides the robot? Mm. Um <sighs> So the, actually what you, you said earlier, like um, it's it's always still like worth you guys fundraising. There's always still work to be done. Sure. And something that I've seen kind of evolve through my time of like starting as a fundraiser, becoming a volunteer and then working at the charity is the eye controlled mm. stuff that, that Special Effect do. Um, that when I very first started was like, um a, a you know usb extension eye control thing that would plug in and and like magnet onto the front of a screen yeah. and that was cool back then but like now we're seeing it kind of built into to laptops and used quite um oh, wow. commercially so a lot of like fps players on twitch i see them using eye tracking to kind of show viewers like where they're looking and hmm. and whatnot um so the fact that just over time that's become like more commercially available and more widely used um, mainstream is is amazing to me. But um, one of one of the people who work at Special Effect, Kirsty, um, she's coded something called iMine, which is a like fully eye controlled version of Minecraft, wow. um, which is free, open source, readily available on our website. Um, we put it live. Uh, was it last year? We put it live, and then the next day we had a video of some people in Japan using it, um, and it, it was just like, oh my god, it's 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 all over the world. Yeah, that's I mean, awesome. Yeah. Um, so I I control always always gets me. There are so many setups that that come through. I mean, we because the work we do is bespoke per each individual that gets in touch with us. Their their setups like made for what games they like what their movement is um what console they want to play it on so there are so many different like solutions coming out of the the um service delivery team every every week that i just can't keep up um but yeah i i control always blows me away um and recently we did a demo with you know, untitled goose game where mm. we just had one massive honk button and i was just really pleased with that <laughs> That's amazing. Well, I, know, yeah. I need I need one of those. If my neighbours oh, no. me, I can just hit a honk. Yeah. <laughs> was, was, was that your dog I just said as well? Yeah, was, sorry, was, he really wants to play Untitled right, Goose Game as yeah, well. I, I totally understand. I got slightly addicted to that game. 
But just because of hitting a honk button, would you believe <laughs> that the most interesting part is hitting a honk button? If you've not yes. played Untitled Goose Game, <laughs> go and play it and do the honk and you'll see exactly why it becomes a small addiction. Um, yeah. Especially when I was on a flight uh, last year on holiday and uh, I was playing it and forgot that my headphones weren't quite plugged in enough. Um, and I had it turned up quite loud and was honking and everyone just looked at me going, what is wrong with this guy? And I was like... <laughs> I'm just gonna sink back into my chair. Um, but yes, it was quite, it was quite amusing to do. Um, but no, that that's great. And I mean, Minecraft's such a um, a wide area, especially in terms of its catchment of the people who play it. Where it, whether it's um, you know someone young, someone old. So it's amazing to see that type of tech actually being used for for, for that. So um, mm. it's great to hear that, and it's amazing that that caught fire and went global as well. So yeah. Um, like that that's that's so cool it must be such a a rush to see something that's made locally just spread like wildfire across the internet it must be a, such an amazing thing to see um yeah, you forget sometimes like we're a uk-based charity um but i'll occasionally walk past dr mick's office and he'll be on a skype call to brazil helping helping wow. someone there um do do some setup and like we are UK based, but it is like weirdly this global mm. thing as well. Um, so yeah, it's always really nice to see and kind of be reminded of that. Well, that um, was that was something I was going to ask actually, which was um, in terms of what the support you do. I mean, like you just said, said, it's a UK based charity, but is there similar charities around the world that kind of creates this network, or are you all in, working individually, or is there one sort of master campaign team that kind of splits one down mothership. Like one mothership of support that goes down to everyone so i mean but but yeah i mean i'll, I'll let you explain what, what how that works globally and stuff yeah sure that that's a great question we um there are like similar charities out in the the us um i know of able gamers um they they do like a, a fairly similar thing i believe uh we differ in in that we do like bespoke like per individual um will kind of build something from scratch whereas I, I i don't work for them so i don't know no, but sure. I, I think they have like set solutions for uh, for people um but no there's there's no like it's just us <laughs> <laughs> um, as far as special effect goes we're like 30 people um wow. in in a converted stable block in oxfordshire um with five vans that drive all all breadth length and breadth of the country um and do a lot of work over like discord and skype <laughs> so yeah maybe one day we'll have that kind of mothership and i've already said that if we open you know an overseas office i'm i'm there for the hawaii branch of um <laughs> especially i'll take that there, there, there we go. Um, so, uh, so if we want to raise funds for Becky to get out to Hawaii, no, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, but no, I mean, it's it's fascinating to see that. I mean, I mean, I guess from my opinion, you guys kind of are the leaders in what you do, and it's amazing to see that people across the globe are using your benchmark as what they should be rolling out internationally and i guess i, I mean is is there actually a, an incentive or, or kind of a, a long-term goal to actually take special effect globally or is it a case of just working locally with whatever's out in those regions at the moment um i think <laughs> i don't know what the like plans are down the line um i'm i'm i keep saying like i just put up these banners <laughs> and, and show up and just be like yay special effect um so I don't know like what the the higher ups are thinking. Maybe one day global domination that would be. Nice. <laughs> um, but yeah, at, at the moment we're um, we're we're growing, but we're growing as sustainably as we can. Hmm. If that makes sense. No, absolutely. Uh, so as as a charity, I think we have a a responsibility to the people who you know are trustees and who donate to um, like look after your donations and and make sure that we grow at a level that we can sustain and keep offering those services to people because we don't just do like this one visit and then like here's your ps4 okay bye we'll we'll not come back mm. we'll you know we'll we'll go back when things things change a lot of a lot of the time like conditions change so we may need to go back and do repeat visits to adjust kit new games come out we wouldn't want to leave someone with like is FIFA 16 okay bye <laughs> <laughs> like if someone's a FIFA fan they want to be playing the latest game Absolutely. so there's always that like 
repeat you know service that we we need to be able to like keep offering to people sure otherwise it's just not fair no i don't <laughs> um, i think that's a great point that you may so you raise there it's, it's kind of frustrating in a way because you want to be like yeah let's take it global let's let's help all the people um but you you kind of have to grow sustainably i guess i, I guess that's the thing is you can... i'm so sorry yeah no 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 that's what we're here to do we're here to listen about you people have heard enough about my nonsense over the years from oh. streaming so it's all about you it's all about you so um but as i said you know I, I think you're absolutely right being sustainable to make sure this carries on is very important so um but i would lo I'd like it would be a dream to see special effects in you know whether it be somewhere like africa or south america or somewhere like that and just see this whole thing catch but um yeah we'll, we'll, we'll see we'll see what happens i mean i think the future is brilliant do you need, do you need to do something no, no, no. I was like, oh, one day. Oh, yeah, one day, one day. Yes, indeed. I, I will be along for <laughs> and, that. I'll be along. I'll be along for that trip to Hawaii as well. Um, but... <laughs> Even in the short time that I've been with the charity, like stuff has has evolved, like technology and and just the the way that we can communicate with people has evolved so much that like you never know. You you just like I know it's a, a cliche, but you genuinely just never know mm. like what's around the corner. <laughs> no, I, I totally agree, and I think it would be wonderful to... Um, I think in my head it would be great to see a lot more developers think first of maybe those with physical disabilities and then, you know, get on board and maybe do like a world tour of something. You know, that would be amazing to actually go around the world. And that way, you know, collecting information about, you know, how sustainable is this going forward and kind of get more charities on board, which was why I've kind of said that, you know, if there was kind of like a global standard that everyone was kind of working towards, it actually helps then people connect to each other around the globe and work together on things. But I mean, it, it sounds like this work is already underway, which is fantastic to hear. Yeah. Um, right, I'm just going to move quickly to a question as the, a couple have started popping in. Um, right, here we go. Um, can you tell us about a solution for a player that stopped you in your tracks, made you think, oh, what, well, I never would have thought of that or similar? And that was from Ben behaving badly. Oh, that's a really great question. Um, like, like I say, there are so many that come out of the, the service delivery team that like they kind of all get jumbled into one um what's what's one that's really blown me away recently can we come back to that yeah certainly that okay? can yeah absolutely i mean i how, how, how like <laughs> how clickbait is that you won't believe the, <laughs> I mean, the amazing I, thing that Betty remembers I, so um where i work I, I can vouch for this we, we had one of your members from special effect came down he did a talk and stuff and he actually did a setup with the actual eye tracking um technology and i was astounded how well that works we were playing i'm gonna say dirt rally i can't remember yeah. which one off the top of my head and what was hilarious was and i think someone's got a photo of this somewhere it was me sat in front of the laptop playing this game and my hands were like i was holding a control pad and i was staring the car with just my eyes and i was like this is so surreal. Well, someone took a picture because my hands were oh, still there <laughs> doing things. And I'm like, I sh this, I, you don't need your hands for this thing. Use your eyes. But honestly, it was one of the most surreal and inspiring things I had ever seen. That just with my eyes, I could control a, a relatively new game. And I was just yeah. like really taken back by that. And it really makes you think... You know, the, the, the ability to... Sorry, I did have my pad here somewhere. The, the ability to just grab one of these and control games with it to completely not have that anymore but still be able to do that with my eyes was just fantastic and testament to you yeah. guys to, to to deploying this around the uh, around to the different people that you support it is incredible work that you guys really do it really is i think that's kind of like what you say there where you 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 think like oh i i, I take this this ability for granted i think that's what kind of caught my attention when I first found out about special effects and I, I see it in a lot of people that I talk to at events like a lot of the time maybe people don't have a, a you know friend or a family member with a, a physical disability that they kind of relate to the charity through but a lot of people can relate to the charity by thinking what would it be like if my favorite game was taken away from me sure <laughs> um or my ability to play my favorite game was taken away from me um yeah so it's it's really nice to kind of hear the game gaming community like 
get behind us in that way. Um, so yeah, that's lovely. I feel like getting uh, one of those eye tracking things. I should have got that actually. Maybe, maybe next year I'll, uh, I'll pick one of those up. I'd be fascinated to yeah. to try and get myself in the, in in that position and and see how well I'd get on. But yeah, I mean it's yeah. it's fascinating to see. Um, you, I, it, you pick it up surprisingly like yeah yeah that, that was a strange thing. Like after two tries, I was like, this is second nature, and I was like, this feels. I mean, I still had my hands like that, like an idiot, but um, <laughs> it it, it, it works so seamlessly, brilliant, and like controlling yeah. stuff. It it was just fantastic. Fantastic. Um, in other news, we have had another donation, so on that basis, oh, wow. you will earn another clap. So there we go. <laughs> so thank you very much for that donation. It is greatly appreciated. We are, well, we've, we've certainly surpassed my goal donation, which now means I've got to go and re-edit it now. So thanks, guys, for giving me war work to do. Um, but as, we're, as we've said, um, it is all going for a great cause, and uh, Becky from Special Effects has joined me today. So um, if you do want to know anything more about the charity, donate or do all the cool stuff, there are some commands at the top left of the screen, which you can put just, just above Becky's face. Other other way? Yep, yep close enough. That will do. You're pointing the right way. That will do. Oh, up. That up is the way. Oh. Um, so, so yeah, if you do want to learn anything else, just put any of those commands in chat and it will be presented with something for you in the chat box there we go I do, i'm gonna get my words out eventually um <laughs> but no it is it is really fantastic to see um the great work that you guys do so do, do you do you try and keep local when you do your services or is it the entire country that you guys travel to yep um we've you know if we can drive to it with one of the vans we'll get to it um the vans have been on the ferries they've they've been all over the place so yeah, it's the length and breadth of the country. Um, we actually helped a a young chap a couple of years ago, maybe two years ago, called Finley, who was up in um, in the the very top bits of Scotland. Oh wow! Um, and like we 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 would have gone <laughs> have gone to to visit him. Absolutely, all got in the van and piled in. But BA, um, you know, the guys with the planes. Um, they they got involved and actually flew Finley and his entire family to us. Oh wow! Um, which was fantastic. It was part of like a, a Christmas like miracle wish thing that they were doing, and it was just fantastic. I think they also like sent the sent the parents off to to New York for for Christmas or New oh, Year's. That's amazing. Um, absolutely lovely. Good, but it was just good job, so yeah. good job. No right. Um, but it was just so nice to like see finley finley's journey like that because yeah he did a little thank you video for us as well which was amazing Aww. we got it through and i think everyone was just like that's nice yeah <laughs> <laughs> i just need to go and have a long walk somewhere I need to go stare at the sky now yeah. <laughs> um yeah i i often like it's been years but i still cry at a lot of our videos yeah it's funny you say that because yesterday during the beat saber one I, I i always get caught at by some of the videos especially that one there that that sets me off yeah. and, and i was like i need to be strong because i'm playing beat saber and uh and i'm like hang on a minute, i can cry because i've got a headset on no one will know and i was like oh no my voice okay right <laughs> right we're back just, hi everyone just, yeah, they're, like filling up like, yes, oh, no. <laughs> oh i didn't know beat saber had a water mode this is new um <laughs> but no that that is a that is an awesome story I, I love hearing stuff like that and i think that again is is testament to the great work that you guys do um is you you are literally changing people's lives i mean whether it be a young adult or, or a child i mean it's just in, incredible i mean one of the videos that always catches my eyes i think it's a little girl in hospital who can change the channel on her tv using some eye tracking stuff and i was like you know this isn't always about gaming it's the little things of just being able to you know pick up a remote control and change channels you know little things yeah. like that that just make a huge huge impact on people's lives it's just that, um, it's stunning absolutely stunning it's there's one point during that video where the the mum's in the background and she just says, oh, "You did it yourself." Yeah. And that, like that independence for for that kid, just that actually one of um, who was it that asked the question? Was it? Um, me was... No, that's no, you. That's, that's me. Uh, probably Ben, ben behaving, ben behaving ben. badly. There we go. I was like, there's, there's alliteration in the title. Hang on. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, uh, to to answer your question, it's it's the any setup that kind of starts with gaming but then has that kind of knock-on effect in someone's life just blows my mind like there's there's the 
kid who's able to like change the channel and just watch whatever CBB show they want to watch. Um, there's another of our older videos. Um, I've forgotten the name of the kid, but it's a, an interview with their mum. And the mum actually says we, we'd set this kid up with a, um, a communication device. Um, so they're using eye tracking to put together um, sentences and, and communicate. And there's a point in the video where the mum says, he was able to tell me he loved me for the first time. Oh and I just God. break every time. I'm like, oh, <laughs> no, huh. I'm, I'm tearing up now. I need I this video now. It. Damn you. We need it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, I'll find it. I'll find it. Yeah. But um, yeah. And like uh, Rob, who is a, a, a chap that we helped um, quite a few years ago, he was um, able-bodied until he had a, a car accident or a, a, an accident. Um, and was was paralyzed from that. We actually went out as part of our eye gaze, um, sorry, uh, stargaze project, where we go into people in hospitals to set them up with eye control, so that they're not like just bored out of their minds mm. while they're recovering, um, and so that they can you know communicate with friends and family, etc. Um, but he's actually like quite recently finished his uni stuff, and you know got got his. PhD, I think, or, or masters, and yes, and just... I remember that video. Yes, yeah, yeah. And and it, it's just like that knock-on effect of it doesn't just stop with gaming. I'm so sorry. I'm like, I'm just rambling. No, you're like, no, please do. Word. I mean, he hearing <laughs> stories like that just shows the importance of the work you do. And as I always keep saying, it's it, it, it's it's all about gaming for us doing the streaming or podcasts or whatever everyone's doing whether they're painting pictures or i think i saw someone singing about a potato which was a bit odd but that was funny um but the work you do is literally changing people's lives to go from a low point or probably the lowest point in that person's life of having that accident where they're in serious strife and not being able to do the normal things they would to get in a phd i mean that if you wanted an incredible story of why to back the charity, there is one right there. Take someone in their weakest point and give them a platform to change their life. I mean, it's testament to you guys. You really do incredible work. And I know I repeat myself, but it really is outstanding what you guys do. In fact, the other outstanding thing is we've had another donation. So well done. <laughs> That's so, amazing. so there we go. Another round of applause for everyone. So well done. Um, we do actually have some more questions flying in, which is, which is wonderful. I'll um, answer them this time. I'm yeah, not gonna cop out. You're not going <laughs> to cop out. Um, so Ben Paven Badley has asked again, this special effect work with Microsoft on the new avatars. I think he's referring to the ones that have got d disabilities in the avatars. Oh, um, I don't believe we did. Um, the, I didn't. I didn't. Act, I'm, I'm in the team that didn't know about the Xbox Adaptive Controller until really late on, though, because a lot of the time, when when the R and D team were working with people, were actually under like proper NDAs, like proper NDAs. Sure. Yeah. Um, so I don't think so. Um, but that that's a, a really awesome example of like the games industry catching catching on to the fact that representation really matters um of that kind and it's a really positive thing and i'm just, i'm so pleased to see those new avatars coming mm. out and it's it's just really awesome like to just be able to make you um we have a one of our service users becky um a cool name uh who uses eye control um like like a master she's incredible at it she actually does artwork through it wow. um but she also plays plays the sims it's one of her favorite games um and it's it's wonderful to hear her talk about it she talks through her communication device um and she she you know she's totally normal 15 year old girl who's like i just really like killing my sims off in different ways <laughs> <laughs> um but she talks a lot about how she wants to you know see people in in wheelchairs etc in in more games um so that she can see herself in in those things and yeah it i know that that's like straying really far from the question mm. <laughs> um but no it's it's really nice to see that starting to happen um so kudos kudos to microsoft 
No, absolutely. And it's, it's as I said, I think Microsoft, it, with most things, have led the way with like the adaptive control pad, um, as you've said, and uh, obviously things like that. So it's it's nice to see at least someone is making that step. And I think everyone else will, will naturally have to follow suit, right? It's, yeah. it's kind of the natural transition. Um, also, a big hello to everyone who's currently in chat. Hello. Hope you're well. Uh, and if you are watching this on demand, hello as well. Um, the next question is probably one that I would say, which is, Becky, why are you so awesome? Uh, that comes from Rockstar 9000. <laughs> um, I'm not sure you can answer that, but um, I have a go. That would be interesting to hear that. Um. Uh, <laughs> um, I, like, I, I will answer that, actually. I don't think I am. Um. Well, I, I, <laughs> I could not disagree more, and I'm sure everyone in chat would agree with me. So on this occasion... Um, you lose, um, but okay, but there is there is a slightly better question to that, which has also come from Rocksalt Nine Thousand, which is, uh, what was the first ever special effect project uh, that was first implemented? Oh, good question. Oh wow, um, that was way before my time. Uh, so special effect is thirteen years yeah, old now, that's right, yeah. um, and was started by Doctor Mick, like just way back in his garage. Um, Ah, oh, that's a really good question. I'm sure it's like on the special effects news channel. Um, I don't know. <laughs> that's a good excuse for you to all visit the special effect website, which if you put exclamation mark special effect, you can get the information for. Uh, the the first one that I I can remember from from my time um, was the the sort of eye eye gaze eye tracking mm. stuff um, that we've been doing. But as I say, like there are so many projects that we do in inverted commas mm. um because each each setup is is bespoke so it, it completely depends on the individual um so yeah there, there are so many um i think actually one of the the first things and one of the reasons that dr mick set up the charity he he was working in um education and he was seeing that a lot of the kids that were provided for during school hours were you know, having to um, go home and, and not really be provided for. Mm. And they were like having to sit and watch their older brothers go out and play football with their mates and just weren't able to to join in. Um, so it, it's very much like it's always kind of stemmed from that everyone should be able to play. Um, and to quote Microsoft on their, <laughs> on their Xbox Adaptive like tagline, when everyone plays, we all win mm. because... That's true. <laughs> like, yeah, absolutely agree. Everyone should join in. Um, I, I could not agree more. And like I said, I, I think it's it's really nice to see something that we would normally be taking taking grant of granted of. Like I said, take a control pad, you break that down, and being able to adapt that to every individual type of physical disability and to give that gaming opportunity back is just staggering. I mean, there's I think there's a video of a boy playing. Uh, I think it's FIFA. Um, where you can do some of the stuff with one hand, I think, with a control pad, and the rest of the buttons are mapped to that bigger controller. And I was just like, you think that, like, most people would pick up FIFA, like, we often play it at work. We, we do on bra break. Um, and then, uh, you know, you pick up a control pad and you just play it, and you suddenly think, wow, if I couldn't do that, how would I go ahead and maneuver that? And, you know, through this technology, you're able to just give so much back uh, as someone who's just said in chat special effects rock i couldn't agree more um, it is a very factual very factual statement so I, I one of the questions i wanted to ask and i guess this is a more um i guess te technical thing to yourself and, and probably the, the the tech team is do you see the technology matching the demand of what's required? So, is, is there? Do you see that there's technology companies reaching out to you to see where they can offer help, or is it something that you're kind of taking the situation to the tech people to see if they can match it up? But what's kind of the route that that's taken there? Oh, it's or is it both? It's the real mix of both. <laughs> just just to be really boring, <laughs> um, a really boring answer. It, it is genuinely a real mix of both. Um, like we'll on the one hand of it you've got um the person that we're helping saying i want to play this game on this console and if we don't already have a relationship with that um game game developer and, and we maybe need to talk to them about something we'll always get in touch and be like hey can you help us with this um and and on the other hand you've got games developers who are hearing about us and going 
oh, how can I help with this? Mm. So it's a real, mm. it's a real nice mix of the two, to be completely honest. Um, and again, it, it completely depends on each situation. Um, but yeah, the, the, a really nice example of that actually is the, um, the, the little robots that we were talking about earlier. Uh, so No Isolation, the company that make them, are a Norwegian company. I think they're in Norway. Um, <laughs> And they like the the kid will be watching through an app, um, and we've actually been like working quite closely with the the no isolation team to kind of say, well, here's here's what um, the, the this this kid is um, using that for. Here's the kind of the roadblocks that they've come into, and we're feeding back in that respect. So it, it, it brings me back again to that kind of open source hmm. um, philosophy that, you know, if everyone's just helping each other and feeding back and saying like, oh, th this is a bit of a problem for for people who can't do this, this and this, maybe you could change it to this. And and yeah, it's it, it all, all comes back around. <laughs> oh, and as I said, it's, it's great. And I think, like you said, I think open source is clearly the the way forward um to make things work and it's with, with most things with technology as soon as um things have been made open to everyone it just inspires creativity and levels levels the playing field for everyone to build off so um I, I think that's great so one thing i wanted to ask is what is the current biggest challenge for special effect is it a lack of a particular thing or is it a lack of maybe volunteers what, what what's kind of the main main focus at the moment for, for you guys um i i think again growing sustainably mm. <laughs> is the biggest challenge at the moment we all like someone someone said in chat like you can tell that i'm i'm very passionate Ooh, about absolutely. the charity and and like we all the staff are all the volunteers are i see adam adam's in chat hello um, hello adam the volunteer team <laughs> um like there's so much enthusiasm from everyone they're just trying to keep up with that is probably our biggest challenge and it's a it's a brilliant challenge to have <laughs> like Absolutely. don't get me wrong i'm like we're we're all so so grateful to just be in this space and to have the support that we have um it it's it's incredible so it's a great great issue to have just keeping up with with everyone's enthusiasm for for helping out um and and growing as as uh as sustainably as we can. I keep saying the word sustainable. It's okay. Um, <laughs> it's, a, it's a good word. I, I like sustainability. It means right. solid and stable, which is good. Yeah. Um, yeah. Right. So another question that has popped in. Um, so consoles and PCs are catered for. Do you work with projects on retro hardware, such as the Spectrum? And that's from Rock Salt 9000. Interesting. Nice. Good question. Um, yeah. You know what? If someone comes to us and says, I want to play on a Spectrum, I want to... What was the, the machine that you had behind you that you were building oh, up? Oh, so, so that is a... Uh, uh, a LaserDisc Active, uh, which is yeah. basically a uh, LaserDisc player, which is currently being repaired, which is why it's got a ton of rubbish behind it. So apologies for that. Um, but this section here actually has a, a portion that pulls in and out where you can actually put a Mega Drive or something like that into it. So at some point, this yeah. thing will be appearing on streams. So I just need to repair it. But, um, yeah. <laughs> if if someone came to us and said, "I've got this, I can't play it because of this," we'll try and make it happen. Like I've seen, I've seen some of the team adapting like real life train sets wow. for kids who, who just want to play trains uh there's a there's a lovely video of like a, a real a, i think it's like a three or five minute montage of like people that we've helped in the past and one of the clips is of a little girl playing with a bubble machine yeah and she's she's controlling the bubbles with a big um with a big button and her brother's like playing in the background and it's anything so yeah if you know retro pc switch xbox ev like everyone everyone's welcome um which again like when we all play everyone wins <laughs> no um, i totally agree and i guess i guess one of the things is probably your tech team will be quite f quite happy to deal with retro consoles because they're relatively easier to control in terms of their setup in the control pad so obviously they have a lot less buttons and let this oh, come because <laughs> i'm again, sorry I, I put up these roller banners but you asked me to take apart an N64, and I'll be like, "How? Um, we we've got wizards on right. the team." I right here we go. Not... If anyone donates five hundred pounds, I will drive to Becky's house with an N64 and a screwdriver. <laughs> 
<laughs> don't do that uh, unless you want that to sounds of really friendly. Uh, there we go no 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 come to your house with an n64 and a screwdriver i will bring it i will hand it to you and you shall take it apart um okay. so uh another question is rolled in uh, again from ben behaving badly who says and i'm going to read this verbatim uh me again sorry uh and forgive me for my <laughs> ignorance but how do you request for help if you know someone who would benefit what's the process of getting a solution built for them great question Brilliant question. Um, again, uh, head to the website, um, www.specialeffect.org.uk. Um, and if you think the special effect can help you or help someone that you know, um, there's a contact form that you can fill out with information on like what you want to play, how you want to play it, what's stopping you from playing at the moment. And that email will go through to our um, to our service delivery team and someone will get back in touch with you. Um, there we go. So, yeah, it's as easy as that. There's there's a little bit of a wait list. I think it's like three, two to three months at the moment. Wow. Um, but it, again, it's you know we're we're trying to get out to as many people as possible. The the service delivery team are, are out every single day wow. <laughs> um, to different ends of the country. So yeah, uh, if um, you uh, think we can help, get in touch. Is is there something that we can do to help? I mean, if if we wanted to volunteer, is it the same process of, of going on the website? Is there a section that we can go to to actually request if our services to yourself? Yeah, totally. Uh, there's the Get Involved tab, and then there's a short form there for volunteering, and that will come through to me. Um, and then you'll be joined to the volunteer squad. Um I've I've been using the the term squad since 2016. I'm just going to keep it going. It's, it's still cool. <laughs> squad <anyone> goals. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, as I said, anyone who's currently in chat or anyone who is listening to this on demand, all the links there is the currently the special effect link that's currently in chat. If you do want to trigger anything else, there are the um, commands at the top left of the screen to learn anything about the charity. So, if you do want to help, anything can help, and that is retreating this stream, any other streamer who's taking part in Game Blast donating, uh, setting yourself up to be a volunteer, or if you know someone who could really help with the services that Special Effect offer, please do visit the website. Please give anything that you can. It really does quite literally change people's lives. So, um, And likewise, if there's any other questions that anyone wishes to submit, exclamation mark pod question, and then there will be a form that you can fill out, which many of you have done already, which is wonderful. So, um, But no, I, I, as I said, I mean, it's, it's amazing to see... Um, to, to see as many streamers as I've seen and as many large companies get involved with Game Blast. Now, the two questions I want to ask is, where did that design come from? <laughs> <laughs> and and um, what is the current goal for this year in terms of raising money? So the, the Game Blast heart was, um, I think, made uh, originally by mark from the team who who put together game blast in its first year seven years ago wow. um insert coin these these little uh the pin badge that you're wearing insert coin have been uh making super cool t-shirts and hoodies and pin badges for the last few years um so you can head to their website and grab yourself uh some game blast merch and all of that money um is very kindly donated by them to us as well um yeah, so that that's where that came from. I love the pin badge. Like, it's so, o so honest, nice. <laughs> honestly, guys, I'm just going to try and attempt to take this live off stream. I'm not going to get naked. Don't worry if anyone gets uh, panicky about that. I don't have um, mine on. I'm, it, is, I'm, it is a I'm very P PG it. stream, but I will hold it up to the camera. Honestly, the quality of this is outstanding. It is worth every single penny. And uh, like I said, uh, well, like Becky has just said, all the money goes goes to special effects. So um, if mm. you can't donate, at least buy something that can be worn with pride, as I will now do throughout my office all day, every day. So I plan to make sure I wear this until it falls apart. And then I will buy another one. And I will buy another. Yeah. 10 so um although it won't fall apart because it's very high quality it is very high quality it certainly is that's that much is true i mean <laughs> I, I was genuinely surprised actually the quality of, of what you get so um i feel like a salesperson for them but i'm not um, but honestly <laughs> please go and check it out i did put a link um on my twitter which is uh at the mmd underscore it was a wonderful picture of me and my uh finely trimmed beard that just got in shot i didn't even realize i was actually in shot when i took that picture <laughs> it's always those things check before you post which uh, i seem to be very bad Bad at, but um, I, I guess coming back to, to special effect and the work that you do, um, 
what's the most challenging setup that you guys have had so far? Is is there some what, something that actually took a long time to get set up um, in terms of how many different teams had to get involved? Um, there's there's one news story on the website. Um, let me see if I can I can find it very quickly because it's it's a, a lady who was wanting to play, I think it was Assassin's Creed. Wow. Um, and she actually ended up. Uh, no, nope, that's not it. Man, I should have had this like. It's fine. It's it's what we do. It's it's um, it's a casual chat. Don't worry about this. <laughs> she actually ended up with um, her setup had over fourteen buttons on it. Wow. Um, and the the news article goes into detail on what like what she like what each button kind of did get, and I... why it was so complicated um it's really interesting stuff as to like you look at a controller and you think like oh that's that's pretty simple hmm. simple thing um but then you see some people's like needs behind those controllers and it it, it all kind of makes sense i, I, I can't get, find i guess it's one of those things like i said you know you you take a game like um FIFA, where I guess the the motions in it are kind of pretty set, right? You've kind of got the directions where the player runs, you've got your shoot, your pass buttons and stuff like that. With a game mm. like Assassin's Creed, there's so many things going on screen at the time where you're probably having to press multiple buttons to do certain actions. So yeah. I think it's really cool that your team is able to um, take you know modern tech and then just completely rethink of it. And it's it, it's amazing to take modern gaming and just give it a more I guess simplified way to enable so many more people to play games it really is amazing the work that you guys do and I guess like I said it, it's great that there are these platforms like the Microsoft um, platform that just enable that tech to happen a lot faster rather than having to make bespoke things all the time but obviously there probably are examples where you're having to make bespoke things and plug that in as well but um, yeah I mean I mean, stories like that of playing modern gaming with, with, with the physical disability is just stunning how you guys do that and again, that like that feeds into kind of the the developers getting on board with it and and doing tweaks to the the game itself. Because what what we've maybe had to do in the past is literally like take apart a controller, you know, solder different mm. bits to the inside of it, and then put it back together again. Whereas if a if a developer's put in just the option to toggle run on and off instead of having to hold down the sure. button to run, um, which for some people, they just don't have the strength to keep that button held down. Sure. Um, so just those little changes at the development stage make it then like have a knock-on effect to make it much easier to, to do the setup for people. Um, I'm, I'm really sorry, I can't find the news. That's okay. I if... Just have a look on the news section of the website because there's lots of different um, examples of the setups that we've done and the the amount of like wires and switches and and different bits are incredible to be able to enable people to just play the game um but it really goes into like how it all works so, so I've, I've got a rather random question for you which has just come into my I mind love those. if somebody had like a load of computer components or you know spare control pads or something like that is, is there someone we can send that to to you guys as a donation um that's a really great question, um, and unfortunately, a lot of the time we're we're not able to to use like uh, secondhand kit that comes okay. in. Um, the best thing to do with it is take it to somewhere like um, Game or CEX to trade in, and then donate the money that way. Got you. Um, or if you've got old games that um, that uh, you you want to like donate the games to a charity to kind of live on there's a, a lovely charity in the uk called get well gamers okay who actually um provide like games and gaming consoles to kids um hospitals um and and hospital wards um so yeah get well gamers is a really good one if you've got like physical old kit that you want to donate um yeah. <laughs> no, that's that, that's great. I mean, it, it just literally came to my mind because I was just I'm actually in the middle. I think we we spoke before we came on on air. I've literally got my my living room looks like the warehouse at PC World at the moment. There is just parts <laughs> everywhere. I think I like I've had to dodge like bits of memory and everything as I was walking over. And it just came to mind that you know there may be some spare parts or something. Like that. But but no, that's 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 a great suggestion. Yeah. Is uh, that's, my, that's my... really lovely lovely 
thought as well. And I, 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 I wish we could take stuff like that, mm. but, um, but yeah, tra trading it in and, and donating that way is always a, an option or other charity. I guess that, I guess that may be an idea where, um, taking something along the lines of um, maybe hooking up with some of these companies and allowing people to trade in something to it and then have that value placed towards special effect maybe you know i do it was just something off the top of my head i'm just uh, i'm just free balling yeah. in my head of ideas and stuff at the moment but <laughs> game game are actually doing that at the moment um they've got a, a game blast pre-order um uh, deal not deal promotion oh, okay. uh, running and they did it did the same last year where a, a percentage of each um trade-in can go to special wow. effect if the trader in a um customer <laughs> decides decides to do that so wow just, i didn't know that well that's yeah, cool. It's really cool. Is, is that running right now i believe so um i'm i feel like i need to double check no I that's so. no that's okay i mean it's, it's it's great to hear things like that because i mean i i wasn't aware of that so um bad game you should be doing more to promote that um but uh but no you, it, <laughs> it was really awesome no um, well that's as i said it's it's great to hear that because um you know loads of people go and trade in stuff to, to game stores and i think that's brilliant to have a percentage of that kicked over to to special effect as well which then comes back to what i said there if you do have any used kit then it's the perfect example to go and trade it in and then give a, a small portion or as much i don't know quite know how it works so i will have to look into that a bit more but give a percentage of it possibly uh to to special effect which is fantastic to hear um there's also been a lot of craziness on stream i think i have now actually just hit 300 subs on twitch which if is the Woo! case it, yeah it has actually happened so uh thank you very much i think that deserves a round of applause <laughs> there we go it finally happened good god what an insane journey this has been now some of you are probably wondering what the inception of this podcast was and to be honest it was partially down to becky um a year ago i actually started um streaming for special effect and uh it turned into a bit of a crazy fest so uh two of my friends which was gaming muzo and trista bites and also a uh, special guest of neil from retro man cave decided to join me for an impromptu podcast uh, which lasted two days uh, and off the back of it this podcast then came and at the moment i'm trying to see the value amount i think it's 536 pounds we've raised so far which is just staggering i think last year alone i think i raised something like 650 pounds over the three days the fact that we are well partially into saturday and we have already well headstrong into hitting that target already is outstanding so thank you all very very much for everything and becky thank you very much for all the work that you do um oh, honestly, okay. honestly thank you like we special effect genuinely rely on on fundraising and and gamers like like you guys with communities like yours to keep going um and like game blast is my favorite time of year because i get to i get to see people like you and communities like yours doing stuff like this and you know dancing dressed as potatoes and Why not? doing awesome podcasts and playing games and just having having fun and and coming together for for special effect and that's so for want of a better word it's so special mm, no, <laughs> um, i agree I, I think it makes my year. <laughs> I think it's I think it's amazing to see the, the the gaming community. I think the gaming community sometimes gets too much of a bad rep where you know people sit there and you know talk rubbish about each other where be on social media and stuff and stuff like that. But for a period of time it's almost like that fades away for a period of time and I would love to see that carry on because you're seeing communities come together you're seeing streamers come together you're seeing companies who are competing usually against each other coming together and it's beautiful to see that community response to really raise money for a fantastic organization and i know i bang on about it all the time but the work that you guys do is changing people's lives we're not just giving a control pad here and saying get on with it as you said earlier you're literally sitting there focusing on the person and making sure that the experience or life-changing technology that you're giving them is completely adjusting everything for them potentially for the rest of their life um to the point where like we said earlier you can even get a phd out of the tech that you guys made which for for me is just outstanding you, you, i would never even think that you could be in probably one of the lowest positions ever of being stuck in a bed and not being able to move to get an a phd degree i mean if that isn't a, a story right there 
I, I don't know what is. So, um, yeah. dancing potatoes. Where do I sign up? Says Synth Spaces. Um, I'm not going to be dancing as a potato. <laughs> However, you probably missed yesterday me dressed as a pharaoh playing Beat Saber. Let's just say I was a little bit sweaty after I finished in the outfit, <laughs> but it was worth it for the amount of money we've raised so far. So I am willing to take that hit. So that is totally fine. Oh, absolutely um, fantastic. No, it is great. So I think we can probably wrap up the podcast there because I'm sure you are extraordinarily busy with everything else that's going on but um to everyone who has been in chat thank you all very very much for joining me becky you have been fantastic stay on the line we'll have a quick chat when we go off the air but honestly yeah, sure. all of you who have raised money so far you are absolutely smashing it out of the park um i will be back at two o'clock with ben behaving badly playing farming simulator i can't believe i'm actually saying these words this is insane oh, see ev everybody's <laughs> getting hyped about farming simulator but this is insane um fortnite, so yeah, what yeah, farming simulator no, no, we, don't, we don't we don't need far fortnite we need farming simulator yes everybody's getting hyped about farming i'm getting very worried about this um <laughs> but ben behaving badly i will see seeing you in just under an hour online um but honestly thank you all very very much please 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 make sure you retweet you donate you do all the amazing things that you guys do for special effect and for game blast if it isn't my stream please go to anyone else's stream who's currently streaming for game blast and give them as much support as possible it is not about the streamer it is about this thing right here which is your heart make sure you go and give it as much as you can for game blast because it really is changing people's lives so from me and from this wonderful lady from special effect becky have a great afternoon me. you are more than welcome thank you very much and i will see all of you lot in about 50 minutes or so. So for now, me, Machine Dean, is signing out. Have a great evening and afternoon, everyone. Take care.